Howdy everyone, Pocho here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we're moving into another qualifier match for the AI Championships with player number 27, Pokerface Craftlon going up against player number 32, Kitty Caddy. Both of these players are experienced, both of these players lead top tier clans, so there is a lot to this battle. I recorded this once before but it failed to record my voice, so we're doing this again. And I have to say right now that this is one of the more interesting champion selection processes I've seen so far in the championships, and there's going to be a lot of discussion about it along the way. So if you're not interested in this, by all means, skip ahead. I don't know when the battle starts. That's up to you guys to decide. Just keep clicking until you get to it. But there will be a lot of discussion about the banning and the champion selection of these two players. So let's get into it. With Krython winning the coin flip, he chose to go first. So we'll start with the bans. First came Raspit and then Goblin Anus from Kitty Caddy. Honestly, the Goblin Anus was a bit of a surprise ban because there are no other goblins on the field. So banning that champion seems a bit irrelevant seeing it as it's a useless character. Whoever picked that character would be putting themselves at a disadvantage, but that's the ban Caddy decided to go with. Their second bans came Mirrodin and Cage, both good bans, I believe. Mirrodin, good AOE damage, has the potential to stun, and Cage, anti-healing, you want to get rid of that, and he does a lot of damage as well. So two good bands. And then thirdly came the Hilia and the Soothsayer. Hilia, interesting man. She's a healer, yes, but she doesn't offer a lot to a team. Unless you have bugs on your team, even then that's not a strong team composition. So an interesting man. And then Soothsayer, a good band, because if you have a, an enemy that has a Soothsayer, and they decide to attempt to build a team with dots or debuffs, you could be in a lot of strife. So some questionable bands, but some good bands as well. Following that came the selection, which was more interesting. Krython, again, going first, picked the Azariel, and Caddy followed up with Naja and Sakura. So interesting first picks, but as you can see on the field, there is a lot of heroes that work well together, and that's where things start to pick up. On the second selection process, Krython went with Chorin and Hargrim, two characters that work very well well together and this is where some strategy came into place. Caddy saw this, she decided to take the Trodar. The Trodar doesn't help her team in any way but taking that champion from Krython puts himself at a little bit of a disadvantage because though Trodar is almost a useless tank on a field with a Choran leader, he is an exceptional tank. He's quick, a lot of taunts coming out, he can get healing off the passive from Choran or the leadership, I forget which one it is, but there is the healing capability. So taking that Trodar away from Krython, super smart play, I think, and I think she did the right thing. Next up, she picked Argon. Works well with Sakrif, a lot of single target damage. Good champion. So this was a pretty interesting step in the development of their teams. Up next came their last selection process, Krython going Siegfried because the Trodar was taken, so he decided to go with a tank. And then the Velandar, again, working with Choran. So he has a 3 out of 5 dwarf team with the Azariel. Now, we have seen in the past, back when Choran used to be a thing, Azariel could work on a dwarf team. So he almost has a, an old school meta team built. Followed up by Caddy's last choice, which was Mizihuku, which... Questionable, to be honest. I think that that is not a great choice under the circumstances, seeing as Mizihuku gets a lot of benefit from characters that have AoE damaging abilities, which in Caddy's circumstances, none. She has no AoE damaging abilities, therefore she's really reducing the amount of dot capabilities that that hero has. AoE damaging abilities will have the chance of applying the dot, or the bleed, sorry, which bleed we know can do a lot of damage when Mizihiku is on the team. So an interesting last choice. Going into the subs, Krython picked Rock, which you're kind of wondering why was Rock not picked from the beginning? On Krython's team, I don't think Rock really fits in. I think the only time Rock would fit in is if you remove the Siegfried, which could be a possibility. The other four characters he has though, I think they're set in stone. I don't think you can remove any of them with the Chor and Leader. I think you really want those characters. So Siegfried, probably the weakest link on Krython's team at this point. Does he remove it for Rock? That decision has to be made after the first battle. The team they select is the team they have to use in the first battle, with the sub being accessible after the first battle. So interesting. And then Kobolok for Caddy, which I think was a really good choice. I think that should have been the choice she picked over... No. 
Actually, yeah, instead of Mizuhiku, I think she should have picked Cobra Lock and then Mizuhiku as the sub-hero. The reason why this is a good hero for her at this point is because after the first battle, if she loses or wins, it depends on the circumstances, she could sub out Trodar and then put in Cobra Lock. Cobra Lock is going to offer accuracy decrease. He's going to offer an AoE damaging ability, which can trigger the dots from Mizuhiku. And he has a heal. I think there's a three good attributes to add to Caddy's team. The heal would be disadvantageous against the Choran because we know healing will rack up the stack of the Choran. However, with accuracy decrease, I think she will be mitigating a lot of damage and she will be applying that dot, which I think is invaluable. I think that dot can be really beneficial in taking out some of these heroes, especially because it does so much damage. But like I said, this was one of the more interesting hero selections of any match we've seen so far, I think, personally. I don't know how you guys feel. We'll see how it plays out in the battle. Going into the first battle, the debuffs come out. Well, no debuffs landed. And the Missy Hugh comes through with his ability. Sigfrey comes out with the defense increase. I believe that when Naja's turn comes around, she will be able to bypass Taunt, I believe. There it is. So now... Caddy can bypass Taunt, which I think is really good, and they're going to start attacking that Azariel. I think if they can rack up some dots on her, that's going to be really good. Stone Rain comes out, not doing a lot of damage. They're going to get the counter attack on the enemy. Trora, not a lot coming out there, and the attacks are now coming out on the enemy Azariel. I think those dots are going to be really powerful. Oh no, they're changing over to Hargrim at this point. I think Azariel would have been the first choice. That's four dots on Hargrim, I think if they can take him out, that'll be awesome. However, with Azariel's invulnerability on the field, I don't know if that is the right target. I feel like they should have stacked up that damage on the Azariel. However, it's the AI. Who knows what the AI does? There comes the heal from Hargrim, not triggering the Azariel passive yet. So that is still on the field as Caddy's team is slowly dwindling down. The only thing they can really save them at this point is if Sakura can get a heal off, but Trodar is first to fall. Typical, he was the weak link on Caddy's team. So like I said, I think that's why the sub would be a good choice for Caddy. And Krython's team is in a really good spot. At the moment, he's slowly racking up those Stone Rain stacks again. And I think that's going to be the factor in which just changes the tide of battle. At the moment, Krython is in such a strong position. But with the Stone Rain stacking up, I don't think there is much Caddy can do at this point. Hargrim is nearly taken out. I don't know if the Azariel passive has been triggered. I haven't been paying attention to that. I feel like that was pretty important, but I haven't seen it. AoE comes out from Belander. It looks like the passive is... Yep, it's been triggered now. So I think it's a little too late. I think there's not much that can be done at this point. Debuffs are removed from Sakura. <coughs> oh, sorry, my voice is a bit shaky. The Drake comes out. So that could be a, a good factor for Caddy's team, is if Drakes keep coming out, they can potentially do a lot of damage. I forget the name of the ability though, but the Gas Cloud that the Drakes do are such a move waster. If the Drakes knew not to use Gas Cloud, I think that could really change the battle because it's just a whole turn of missed damage. There comes the Stone Rain taking out the Sacra. Argon in critical HP, but he's hiding. No one can attack him. He comes out of hiding now, I believe. So if someone decides to hit him, I think they could potentially take him out. The Azario is being hit now, but there's not much really. Unless they all come out with the Drakes and Drakes just rip through the Azario, I think that might be something good. Argon falls, Drake falls, four Drakes come out. But all damage is going to be put on the enemy Naja, and she's not going to be able to survive for very long. There we go. The gas clouds come out. That's four wasted turns. What are you supposed to do with that? The AI has just no capability of using Dark Elves. They're so horrible at using the Dark Elves. The Drakes have such potential to do damage that it could of it could turn the battle, but the AI is just incapable of knowing how to use Drake. Literally, all they needed to do was cast their attacks and they would have taken out Azaria. If she can bring out four more Drakes, maybe something might come of that. There we go. It's all on Naja at this point. There's a lot of damage that comes out on the Azariel. She's getting a lot of health back, though, when the Naja heals. Gas clouds come out again. It's just a cycle. The Najas need to take... Not Naja, sorry. The Drakes need to take out that Azariel. Now it's going to come a lot of damage. Is it going to be good? <clears throat> That's a lot of damage. But unfortunately, Stone Rain comes out and nearly takes out the Naja. Naja is on critical HP. If she can be taken out now, she's not going to be able to bring anyone back, and she falls. 
those drakes, if those drakes just could just not use that one ability and focus on their attacks, I think Caddy could have won. I really think she could have. With Troda being such a weak link on her team, though, she was essentially going into the battle 4v5. Krython, it was just a stolen game for Krython. Just stacking up those stone rains. That is his only damaging ability, really. Everyone else can do damage, yes, but it's waiting and waiting till that stone rain comes out and just wreaks havoc. As you saw, it worked pretty well. First point, <coughs> first point going to Krython, and now it's up to the challengers if they wish to use their sub-hero or not. Going into the second battle, Caddy has decided to take out Mizu and put in Cobra Lock. We'll see if that makes any difference. Again, we're going to be waiting for the Naja to bypass the taunt. However, I don't know if I completely agree with her choice in who to sub out. I personally would have taken out Trodar and put in Cobra Lock. That would have been my choice. I still feel like the Dot could have done a lot of damage. So now we're getting a lot of retaliation on the Choran, but it's not doing a tremendous amount of damage. The Azariel is now the pick of the litter this time. She is going to be an attempt to take her out, but we'll see what happens with two healers on the field and the Azariel healing and the healer on the enemy. Four healers, essentially. I can't see a lot of damage breaking through her. And I feel like this is where the dots would have taken place. As you can see, Trodar is very close to dying. And if he is taken out, I feel like that instantly eliminates Caddy from the competition. Another attack comes out from Preblock AoE, putting the accuracy debuffer again. It's just, it's not enough. The damage coming out from Argon and the Drake coming out. Maybe the Drakes are enough to take out the Azariel. But they, again, they're going to use their, their gas cloud first. There it is. I feel like the attack, the AI is just so incompetent when it comes to Dark Elves. They're such a risk to use, especially in an AI based competition. Again, the Taunt bypass is up, the debuffs are, they're gonna go for the Azario, but Hargrim tops up. She is still fighting well as now Koblock is taken out of the fight. And maybe another Drake on the field might make a difference, but I doubt it. The Drakes really need to rip through that Azariel, get rid of the the invulnerability, and then aim the Hargrim. But by that time, the stats on Troran are stacking up, and they will it will melt any character with low HP when the Stone Rain comes out. I believe it might be next turn we'll get hit with a Stone Rain. We'll find out. The Krykon's team is back up to full HP. 18 stacks on the Troran now. Is Stone Rain about to come out? Nope. The low HP on the Sakurath allowed the Troran to just auto attack. 21 stacks now. The Drakes may come out, but it's not going to make any difference. Here comes Stone Rain. Does half HP, but keeps Naja in the battle. And now the Hargrim is the main focus by the looks of it. The Drakes come out, but it's irrelevant. Naja is such low HP. She will die in a moment, and she is taken out. Giving the second point to Krython. Caddy being eliminated from the competition. We'll head over to the leaderboard and have a look at what the go is at the moment and who is so far in the quarterfinals. So with another battle out of the way, Kitty Caddy is eliminated from the competition and Poker Face Krython moving into the next round where he will be versing Tactician Joe Mugsy in the quarter final. So very interesting matchup. Next we'll be moving into Scout Adigan going up against Pool Boy, Mark Kendall, and then we have Kozer Assassin going up against Jazzy Egg. So four more battles or four more players up next, and only two of them will be making it through. So until then, I'm just gonna have to wait and see what happens. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. And wherever you are in the world, until next time, please take care of yourself.